Let's uh, bring you this discussion now and it is being branded as a breakthrough in the fight against HIV AIDS in Africa as South Africa uh, leads a vaccine discovery research which has received some 860 million rand. This is a grant from the United States Agency for International Development and the grant is aimed at implementing a program called the HIV Vaccine Innovation Science and Technology Acceleration in Africa. The program spearheaded by the South African Medical Research Council alongside some top scientists from seven African countries. So let's find out more about this program now. And we're joined by its leader, uh, that's uh, the South African Medical Research Council's CEO and President, uh, Professor Glenda Gray. Prof, good morning to you and thank you for your time. So I was reading this article and on Monday uh, I understand you held your first meeting as the brilliant consortium and this is being described as marking the beginning of a groundbreaking journey into the future of HIV research in Africa. Expand to us or Tell us more about this groundbreaking journey into the future of HIV research. What do we mean? Here? Thank you very thank, yes, thank you very much. It is very exciting. So on Monday, we brought all the scientists from all the different countries, Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Zambia, South Africa, and Mozambique. And all these scientists are clinicians, laboratory scientists, and immunologists and virologists. And together, um, we are developing this roadmap to, number one, test um, HIV vaccines. Uh, number two, discover HIV vaccines using the breakthrough infections that occur on our continent, mm -hmm. trying to understand the viral evolution and to choose the right immunogens from the surface um, of the HIV envelope to put into innovative platforms. So we're also working with mRNA um, platforms, other nanotechnology platforms. So we're looking at, at different vaccine platforms together with immunogens um, that um, are derived from the African continent and also to try and understand the interaction between the clades that circulate in Africa and um, the um, and, and whether the the, these clades will have a role in how we make vaccines. Yeah. So it's a very exciting program. This is the first time a group of people will not only um, discover and evaluate vaccines both in the preclinical or animal model and in humans, but also um, make the vaccines themselves and take them through the regulatory processes. So we're very excited and we have the most talented scientists on the continent working with us. We're going to talk more about that ultimate scientific breakthrough because I understand there's been many of these that have been in the making, or should I say the research programs. The funders of your particular program, am I correct to assume that it is in the main the United States and what are their objectives? Why is it that they believe in this program? So the, the whole aim of this program is to have localization and to develop capability outside the United States and to allow um, African scientists to take control of programs. So very often when, when funding happens, normally there's an American or a European scientist that leads and, um, and the African scientists are usually just um, recipients um, and work in collaboration but never take the lead. And we feel that by changing the center of gravity and putting the ownership of, of scientific discovery in the hands of African scientists, um, we, we can be successful. And so I think we, we, um, agree, uh, with this, with this, um, agree, we agree with the USAID's program to try and shift the center of gravity into Africa and to develop African science. So we do have a lot of scientists um, in Africa that are highly capable, mm. and we do know that by investing in science in Africa, we can discover more um, uh, uh, vaccines, we can understand mechanisms of action, and so it's to, it's to try and proliferate 
uh, the science economy in Africa by using HIV vaccines as a as a fulcrum to do this. Yeah, I know, Professor, that this is not your space. But what I'm about to ask you now, but surely it's got to worry you, given the state of geopolitics. Are you worried that the tensions that we are seeing politically in the world might jeopardize? the funding of such crucial programs like the one that you're leading? So, I did, so these calls were ha happened a, lo a long time before the geopolitical tensions that have arisen. And so I, this, this preceded, this ha this, um, the geopolitical um, tensions have happened afterwards. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to, to note that the awards have gone through and that um, hopefully science can serve as um, as advocacy, as a as a, as ambassadorial approaches to f f uh, solving solutions at a global level, and so science is a very important um, medium to basically unite the world. And I do hope that um, we, as South Africa and and our neighbouring partners in on in the continent, can work together to show that um, science can pave the way for um, a, an approach at a global level that calls for unification. Yeah. And so, um, so I think we, we see it in that way and that um, we work, you know, even though we are working with, with the USAID, we have many partners all over the world, um, both in Europe, um, in India, um, and um, in, in South America. So we don't see this just as a, um, as a collaboration with USAID, but as an international calibra calibration to collaboration to bring forward some innovation to leapfrog the work that we know already to try and make some breakthroughs in um, in HIV vaccine research. We have not been successful for many years around HIV vaccine discovery, but a lot of the work that we've invested in HIV vaccine research has helped um, catalyze other programs like the COVID vaccine initiative. We'd never ever have advanced so fast if it hadn't, we haven't made the investments in HIV vaccine research. So even though, um, uh, HIV vaccines may be elusive, the kind of, the kind of groundwork that occurs and the discoveries that occur in our understanding of the biology and immunology help us for pandemic preparedness, help us lift up, um, the research infrastructure and understanding, um, in Africa. Let's conclude the conversation, and I'm going to latch on to the word that you have used now, um, and that is elusive. What new discoveries can be made through your team, this new team? Where I'm driving it is how far are we from that ultimate breakthrough or scientific breakthrough of finally getting the HIV vaccine? That's what we... I think the world is desperate for. Yeah, so we know where we need to go. So all the other studies that have failed have shown us some markers of correlates of protection. And we, we do know that there are certain parts of the envelope of the HIV virus which, um, which have always systematically over all the trials shown um, areas of protection. So we are going to aim our focus on, 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 on these, what we, what we call epitopes. So there's the envelope of the HIV and there's various parts of it. And there's a specific part of the envelope called V1, V2, mm. which we're going to target our uh, immunogens to, to try and induce antibodies to that region of the HIV envelope. And we do believe that if we can get the right amount of immune response to that area, um, we can we can move the field forward and we may have a vaccine that may um, show um, great promise. So we already have a, a roadmap, a pathway to go, and we're aiming our focus on these specific epitopes of the envelope to, to target as potential ways of protecting people against HIV. So I think we do know uh, where we're going, and hopefully our vaccine immunogens will uh, do exactly what we are looking for. Professor Glenda Gray, we wish you everything of the best, and hopefully it will be your team that gives us this uh, vaccine. Professor uh, Glenda Gray is leading uh, this new team of scientists. It's called the Brilliant Consortium, and the understanding is that it's, uh, it's in the majority led by a number of women scientists who come from the continent of Africa. Thank you very much, Professor Glenda Gray.